In today's video, we're going to be using Autodesk Fusion 360 and the Sile CNC machine to turn this into this. G'day everyone, my name's Aaron. Welcome back to the Design Creativity and Technology channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be machining some simple brackets on my CNC machine. Now these are from my very good friend, The Chief. Now I call him The Chief because I worked with him for many years and he used to be a Chief Petty Officer for the Royal Navy. Uh, so the English Royal Navy that is. Um, commanded a pretty high rank back in the day and uh, pretty much that's how, I, that's how he commanded us teachers when I used to work for him. Really good guy. So this is a love job for him. Uh, and I'm doing this also because he's a return serviceman. He spent time in the Falklands as well during that conflict. And I believe he's the only uh, Royal Navy person who's ever told uh, the Prince of where to go. But that's another story for another time. I had something really exciting planned for you today. I had an excellent CAD model done. Um, I was relying on the old blue tape and super glue trick to stick my material down to this uh, fixture plate here. But of course, that failed. So for me, it was back to the drawing board and you'll see the CAD model here on the screen now. Simple stuff, put a few holes in the bracket and clamp it down that way while I could do all my machining processes. So why don't we jump on over to the CAD. We'll flick between the CAD screen and the machining screen and you can take a look at the strategies I went to to make this for you today. Hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, so here's my CAD model that I prepared for this video. You can see I've modeled my table, uh, placed the orange vise on top of the table, uh, secured the part in there, and, and of course done all the cam uh, tool pass for that model, okay? Um, as you saw in the video, the super glue let, let go, so I didn't continue down this path. So I went back into my modeling environment and just put, put a couple of holes through the bracket, some tapped holes, and put it on a fixture plate. So with setup one here, uh, you can see what I'm doing. I'm spot drilling the top, uh, deep drilling a five mil hole, coming back in with a rigid tap, pocketing that hole out, and then contouring that hole. I didn't worry about deburring or chamfering. I think Mark can do that uh, offhand uh, on his own, in his own time. All right, let's uh, pop on over the machine and see this in action. So on setup two here, you'll see that I'm concentrating on the fixture plate and my work coordinate is set to the back left hand corner. Um, you'll see that I'll face the fixture plate here, spot drill. I'll drill it with that same five mil drill bit. But instead of uh, swapping out that drill bit, uh, what I'll do here, I'll just come back in again with a six mil end mill and plunge straight through those holes to clean that up. All right, so let's jump on over and take a look at that in operation now.
Okay, so setup three includes bolting the part to the fixture plate. And you'll see here that I've kept the same work coordinate system here for the fixture plate and for the part. So that means all my Z movements will be in a positive. They won't be negative. The fixture plate will be um, zero. Uh, we'll do some outside adaptive uh, clearing and then pop in there and uh, just come around and do a um, an outside contour. Now, to make sure that I get all the way through here, I control that in my Heights tab, and if I went down from the selected geometry, and this is a, this is a problem a lot of people do with their cam, they come from a 2D background, and they like to pick this top line. Now, if you worked in old 2D cam systems, that was quite common because it was a DXF or a vector file you brought into it, and you'd always pick the contour you could see, which is usually the top one. However, in this sort of 3D modeling environment, we're able to select the bottom, so the bottom contour, and then in my Heights tab, I tell it, you know what, from that selected contour, drop down uh, minus 0.1 of a mil. Right, let's go over to the machine and check it out. Now for setup four, you'll see that um, I utilize these two holes here. I put a cap head screw in, uh, or a cap bolt we call it uh, over here, or where you're from. And when I orientated my machine in this orientation here, of course the fixture plate had been removed. I put these two cap bolts in. Now that gave me parallelism to the vice jaw, and I used some blue tape on the bottom here just so I wouldn't mar the part when I clamped on it. Now I didn't swing off this. Um, you gotta remember I had not machined these faces, so that was raw stock, which is, you know, it, I don't think it needs machining. The plate was the thickness that it needed to be. So I popped once again, popped in with a spot drill to, you know, just, so I'd get those holes. Uh, drop in there with a 4.2 millimeter drill bit. Now there's quite some deep drilling going on there and you'll see the rigid tapping uh, when also. Now, how I don't break the tap off, I, you know, you may do these various ways, this is the way I did it. In, uh, in my bottom height for deep drilling, I opted drill tip through bottom, okay? which means that popped that drill tip down past it. Now, so I didn't crash my tap into it and snap that tap off, I lifted my tap up in the bottom height. You can see I turned off drill tip through bottom and made it go positive one mil to pull it up out of that hole so I knew I wouldn't bottom out and snap the tap off. Alrighty, let's pop on over and uh, check that out in operation. Hey guys, that wraps up our video for today. I really hope you like it. I appreciate you sticking with me and following along, uh, even if you did watch it at one and a half times speed. That's, I'm talking to you, Mike. <laughs> Good on you guys. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.